Thank you all for staying here. Um, teacher voice. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right. Thank you all for staying here. I know everyone's on a little coffee or a potty break now, but um, I, as I was lovely introduced by Mike, um, my name is Kristen. I'm the deputy chief of staff for the mayor and just came on the ALON board. Um, and who could not be with us today, Dwayne Ashley. He's our new director of operations in the city. He's also been put on the board. And a lot of you may know Dwayne. He used to run the parks department for the city of Pittsburgh. He is out of town at a graduation this weekend. So you are stuck with Paul and myself. Um, as you know, the mayor is unable to be with us today, but he did send the next best thing, and I'm sure you will all be very excited. We have a quick video message from him that's gonna give a sort of brief, kind of fun overview of things that have gone on in the city in the last year and some things that are upcoming. And after that, Paul and I will make a few more brief remarks and we'll do our the best we can to keep everyone on time. So without further ado, I give you Mayor Ravenstall. I'm not sure who our few people are. Here we go. Good morning, ALOM attendees. First and foremost, I'm sorry that I am unable to be there in person. I'm sure Paul and Kristen from my staff have represented the city well in my absence. And I'm sure they'll be happy to take questions on my behalf when I'm finished. Well, what can I say? 2009 was a banner year for the city of Pittsburgh. We got things off to a great start with an unprecedented sixth Super Bowl win and Steelers victory parade for the ages. I can hardly believe it when just four short months later, we were planning yet another victory parade for our Stanley Cup winning Pittsburgh Penguins. It was so great to be able to call Pittsburgh the city of champions once again. Even Sporting News Magazine named Pittsburgh the number one sports city in America. And if that wasn't enough, in September, Pittsburgh once again had the eyes of the world upon it when we hosted the G20 Summit. I was so proud and honored that President Obama picked our city for this event. We were able to show the world what we've always known, that Pittsburgh is an awesome place to live. Not only did we host the event, but we hosted one of the safest and most well-run events of its kind. Now folks in Korea and Toronto, sites of upcoming G20 events, are calling us to find out how we did it. We made our city shine, kept everyone safe, and came in under budget. Can you believe it? City government coming in under budget. The G20 was an amazing feather in the cap for our city, and it was great to show off Pittsburgh to the world. But the even better news is that we continue to reap the benefits of this event. Putting aside the fact that the summit amounted to 100 million in branding exposure for Pittsburgh, it has also put us on the map as an international destination. For example, Pittsburgh has been named as the North American host city for this year's World Environment Day on June 5th. Not only that, other groups who never would have thought to bring their convention to Pittsburgh have decided to do just that. Plus, we have international delegations visiting all the time and some other potential big events in the works, so stay tuned. 2009 was more than just parades and summits. In the spring, Labor Secretary Solis and Energy Secretary Chu chose Pittsburgh as the place to announce the $3.2 billion energy efficiency and conservation project stimulus package. Pittsburgh was chosen for this historic announcement because we have become the black and gold and green city. In 2009, the city put solar panels on a firehouse, planted more than 1,000 trees, recycled more than 16,000 tons of waste, and held a solar installation training workshop for city carpenters, plumbers, electricians, and HVAC employees. This year, we plan to begin installation of energy efficient streetlights throughout the city, are looking into the feasibility of a solar farm for Hazelwood, and will install more solar hot water heaters on city buildings, starting with the general services building the first week of May. We will also complete an energy audit on the city county building, and we recently introduced legislation for our first ever green purchasing policy. 2009 also brought its share of new accolades and accomplishments for Pittsburgh. 
at a time when the rest of the country was struggling through the economic downturn, Forbes magazine praised Pittsburgh for weathering the storm. We topped the list of the country's 25 strongest real estate markets. We're ranked seventh among the top 10 cities for most affordable homes, and we're sixth among the top 10 cities for job seekers. Our unemployment rate was consistently lower than the country and state averages. Like Places Rated Almanac did in 2007, in 2009, The Economist declared Pittsburgh America's most livable city and the 29th most livable city in the world. We don't take this accomplishment lightly here in the Berg, and we continuously strive to live up to that moniker. <laughs> to that end, 2009 brought spray parks to our neighborhoods. We got the acclaimed Pittsburgh Marathon back up and running with a record number of runners both last year and this year. In December, the city helped coordinate the first citywide World AIDS Day event, and I recently put together the city's first ever LGBT Advisory Council. We continuously strive to make our city better, brighter, and more livable for every Pittsburgher. Pittsburgh was also given another bond upgrade in 2009. This was the city's third major bond upgrade since I took office, and was given in large part because of our balanced pay-as-you-go capital budget. It has been a priority of mine since day one to bring our city back to financial solvency. And while it helps for outsiders to note that the trend in population decline appears to be abating, the unemployment rate remains low, and strong education and health service sectors provide the city with long-term economic stability. What really matters is that life is becoming easier and better for the residents of Pittsburgh. Just like 2009, I think 2010 will be another big year for economic development in the city. We were thrilled and relieved to see the completion of the Rivers Casino, a world-class gaming facility that will serve as a catalyst for future responsible development in that area. And really, Did you ever think Pittsburgh, of all places, would have a casino? And it's pretty nice, too. Come down and see for yourself when you get a chance. There are great restaurants, a beautiful view of the city, and soon, table games will be up and running. The casino is just the tip of the iceberg. Our historic Market Square is currently undergoing a $5 million dollar renovation that is critical to downtown's continued growth. 2009 also saw the first pieces of three PNC Plaza development open. This is the tallest building constructed in Pittsburgh since the 1980s. Even more importantly, it is one of the largest LEED certified mixed use buildings in the nation. Just two weeks ago, we celebrated the grand opening of Fairmont Pittsburgh, the brand new luxury hotel located in three PNC Plaza. This hotel was made with locally sourced materials, boasts energy efficient lighting, air and energy, as well as art that is inspired by local culture and made by regional artists. As if a skyscraper isn't enough, out in the East End neighborhood, the construction of Bakery Square is well underway. This $113 million dollar mixed-use development at the site of the former Nabisco baking plant is slated for opening this summer. Due to the sustainable design strategy, it's likely the site will be awarded a LEED certification of silver or better. We've also got the new multi-purpose Consol Energy Arena scheduled to open on August 1st. I'll be sad to say goodbye to the Igloo. We've had a lot of great winning seasons there, but I'm excited for the new arena and to having the Pens start a new legacy of winning in their new building. Plus, Lady Gaga just booked the arena for her tour and will perform there September 5th. Get your tickets soon. And last, but certainly not least, last month we were thrilled to announce the historic partnership between the URA and the Buncher Company to develop 80 acres along the Allegheny Riverfront. You all know that connecting riverfronts is a key component of my vision and priorities for the city. With this partnership, vacant 